Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com and this is a special surgeon question and answer session all about radiation associated heart valve disease. I am thrilled to be joined by Dr. Douglas Johnston, who is the chief of cardiac surgery at Northwestern Memorial Hospital in Chicago, Illinois. During his extraordinary career, Dr. Johnston has performed over 4,000 cardiac procedures with more than 3,000 involving some form of heart valve repair or heart valve replacement. Dr. Johnson, it is great to see you again and thanks for being with us today. Hey Adam, great to see you. It's great to be here and uh, be here with the heartvalvesurgery.com community. Yeah, Dr. Johnson, given your research in this very important topic, I wanna start with the question of what is the association between radiation therapy and heart valve disease? It's a great question. And because it, the answer there is one that a lot of cardiologists don't think about on a regular basis. Uh, many physicians are completely unaware of, and a lot of patients uh, haven't really been told. So the treatment for conditions like Hodgkin's disease with radiation to the chest has been incredibly successful. It's a medical miracle. So many people are living, uh, surviving after these cancers. What many weren't told when they were initially treated is that the late effects of radiation can affect anything inside the chest cavity. So the heart, the lungs, the esophagus, um, because we're talking about heart disease today, what we're thinking about really is valves, heart muscle, coronary arteries, ascending aorta, and the pericardium. Any combination of those can be affected by radiation and every patient is different. Dr. Johnson, very helpful. Let's dive a little deeper specific to the valves. How does radiation impact the function of heart valves? So radiation causes fibrosis in tissue and how that manifests over time uh, is often a slow thickening of these tissues. For whatever reason, while it does impact the heart muscle to some extent, uh, it impacts the fibrous tissues of the heart to a greater extent. And so typically what we see initially is thickening and reduced mobility of the leaflets. And this can be uh, in particular, the aortic and mitral valve, not necessarily predictably from one patient to the next, it can be both or one or the other. And then late, what we see is the formation of calcium. And that can be very intense um, in the ascending aorta, in the aortic and mitral valves. And in the most typical fashion, it forms between those two valves, what we call the aortomitral curtain. And this is what makes it such a surgical challenge and why we need to approach this disease differently than we would other kinds of heart valve disease. Dr. Johnson, let's talk a little bit more about the surgical challenge you just mentioned. Are treatments successful for radiation associated cardiac valve disease and are outcomes different for different valves? It's a great question. The answer to that is a resounding yes. I think it all depends on the strategy that's employed when we first see a patient with this disease. This is really all about the lifetime management of valve disease, which is a principle we apply across all valve disease, but it's so important in radiation patients. And in particular, because reoperations in radiated hearts are, for reasons we don't understand very well, much more challenging and the outcomes aren't as good. So if we're gonna do a surgical procedure, we want it to be definitive. We wanna treat both valves. If there's the opportunity to treat the aortic valve with a transcatheter valve, that is absolutely our preferred approach for patients who are presenting with primarily aortic valve disease. At the present time, a lot of the mitral transcatheter prostheses don't fit well with the calcium burden of radiation. And so if a patient presents with primarily mitral valve disease, we wanna think then about a definitive procedure to treat both valves. That's the commando operation, which involves replacing the calcium between the two valves. Sounds like a big operation and it is, but the outcomes are actually quite good. And most of these patients can live for a very long time and have a good quality of life after even a very extensive operation. Dr. Johnson, I loved hearing all about the lifelong management of patients who are experiencing valve disease due to radiation. I loved hearing about the surgical options and some of the bigger procedures you're doing there at Northwestern Medicine, like the commando. And so I've got to ask you, what do you consider to be the big considerations for patients who have valve disease because of radiation therapy? Biggest consideration there, Adam, is that if you've had radiation and valve disease, that is a different disease process than valve disease without radiation. So you're unique. You and similar patients are unique from other valve disease patients, and you as an individual 
are going to have a unique presentation within the heart. So the, the key consideration for patients and your team, and this really requires a team of experts, is to figure out exactly what's going on with your heart. Valves, muscle, coronaries, aorta, and everything around it. And so typically, in addition to an echocardiogram, we'll get an MRI and a CT scan and often a left and right heart catheterization. So we have a complete picture of everything that's going on. With that, we can sit down with the patient and say, okay, this is the stage of your disease. This is what's happening today. The key consideration there is timing. When does something need to be done? When will we be, we be improving the long-term outcome by doing something now? And that's a joint conversation between us and the patient. But until we have all that data, it's hard to make a decision. And that decision is never made on just an echo alone. Dr. Johnson, uh, fantastic advice. And I really appreciate how you wrapped it up all with shared decision-making amongst the patient and his or her team. And on behalf of patients at heartvalvesurgery.com and patients all over the world, I wanna thank you for taking time away from your very busy practice there at Northwestern Medicine in Chicago, Illinois. Thanks for being with us today. Adam, thank you so much. And as always, thanks for all you do to improve the awareness of this disease process. It's, it's critical work and we really appreciate it. Hi everybody, it's Adam. I hope you enjoyed that video. And don't forget, you can always subscribe to our YouTube channel. Watch the next two educational videos coming up on your screen or click the blue button to visit heartvalvesurgery.com.